Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Now you find me behind the wheel of the 2021 Suzuki Ignis. Now this has just come out. Suzuki Worthing who have lent me this car got it in I think about a week ago and it's got 20 miles on the clock. So it is brand new. It's a facelifted model. So we're going to explore the car together over the course of this video. I've done about a mile I haven't looked where anything is so it's going to be probably some fiddling around trying to work out where a few buttons are but it gives you hopefully a good idea of how intuitive this car is and my first driving opinions of the car so let's get going let's explore the 2021 Suzuki Ignis. Ignis sit within the market? Well, it almost sits across two different segments. If you look at the styling and the dimensions, it's a compact SUV. But if we look at the size of the vehicle, which is 1.6 meters by 3.6, it's more like a city car. So I think this really should be compared against the likes of the Volkswagen up, the Hyundai i10 and the Fiat 500. So what we're going to do is head into the local town of Worthing and do some basic town driving because I think that's where this sort of car is going to spend most of its time. So it's going to drive around, see what it's like in terms of just nipping in and out of traffic, parking, probably going to the supermarket, just some semi-sensible things because that's what this car I think is going to be built for. Yes it will be able to go on dual carriageways and motorways but I don't think that's where this particular car will spend most of its time. So let's head into Worthing and we'll see what it's like in general town conditions. So now we've arrived on Worthing Seafront. I thought this would be a lovely place to go which it normally is but the weather is grey and horrible so I'm very pleased to be inside the Ignis as opposed to outside. But let's start off with the engine in this car. Now we've got a 1.2 litre 16 valve engine and added to that we have a mild hybrid system. So you may have heard of a traditional hybrid or something like a PHEV plug-in hybrid, self-charging hybrid and those mean they've got a normal petrol engine and also an electric engine which means you can drive on just electric for a short distance. This on the other hand has a very small battery and a very small electric motor which means that it will help out the petrol engine when required so that's like pulling away from traffic lights or you need a bit more acceleration but you can't just run it on electric only. So it does offer several benefits for both you as the owner and also Suzuki. So if we talk about the important, which is you and I, what, what does it mean for us? Well, mostly I think is you get better fuel consumption. You're looking at around high 50s, which I think is brilliant for this sort of car. You've got better emissions, which is also even better. So that means you're going to lower your road tax. If you're a company car owner, it's going to be have a lower benefit in kind. So you're going to be saving money by buying a hybrid version of this car. Well, you don't really have a choice now of buying a hybrid or non-hybrid in the UK. So we're just getting to the supermarket now and we'll park up, do a bit of shopping, and then that gives us a chance to see how much stuff we can fit in the boot haven't got a huge amount to do but we'll park up put it in park and now let's go and pop down to the supermarket be back in a minute and uh, we'll load the boot up so we've got three bags not the most amount of shopping but we'll open up the car i've already got two big rucksacks in here with camera equipment 
So we'll pop those in there. And there's still loads of room. You could fit another three or four, so you can easily do a week shopping. I'm going to get back inside because it's blowing an absolute gale. So there we go. Boot practicality done. So in front of me, the instruments are very clean, very simply laid out, very non-fussy. So we've got speedo, rev counter, and over on the right, we've got the trip computer. And you can cycle through various bits of data. So at the moment, we've got what is happening with the hybrid system. So that's gonna show you whether it's using the battery, charging the battery, or using the petrol motor. Over on the right, we've got a small button with info written on it, and you can cycle through various other bits of information. So let's get around this roundabout first of all. Uh, so you press that, and it goes over to instant fuel economy. Press it again, and we go over to average fuel economy, range, average speed, driving time, idling time, um, lots of other things that I personally don't think you'd ever care about. The one I'd actually leave it on would be uh, the fuel, amount of times you need to refuel. That's the only one you care about really. Um, it's interesting though when you're charging your battery, but completely pointless to the driving experience of the car. So that's the instrument you've got in front of you. Over on the left, we've got the controls for the infotainment system. Now you've got two options here. You can either use the standard one from Suzuki. So we'll have a look at the main menu on that. It's all touchscreen. So we go over there, split into four tiles. So that's the controls for the radio. We've got telephone over on the right. Bottom left, we've got media. And then at bottom right, at the moment, we've got a way of connecting to your phone. So I've got my iPhone plugged in, so it's got Apple CarPlay. It also supports Android Auto as standard. And that, to be honest, is the functionality I'd use. I Even in premium cars, I generally plug my phone in and use that. So I can just press Apple CarPlay, go over and I might want to listen to a podcast or use Google Maps or Waze or whatever it happens to be. So the actual system that comes with Suzuki is very functional. It's very basic, but does the job. But as long as you've got a phone of some description, either an Android or an Apple phone, you can plug it in and use all of that functionality. It is completely touch, which is okay. Um, it's not that bad. There's a slight delay on it. But I, again, once you've changed it to whatever you happen to want you know if you are listening to music you just change it once and leave it sat now you leave it once you're getting going so i'm not going to be changing too many options while driving so i'm gonna not be too worried about that underneath the infotainment system we've got all of the controls for your air conditioning they're all grouped together very simply you can just reach down and change them you don't have to even look really because they are very easy to get to. Underneath that we've got a 12 volt power supply and over on the right we've got a USB port. So that is where you'd plug your phone into if you want to use the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. A couple of cup holders, this is the unique Suzuki styling with square cup holders. Never seen a, any other car with square cup holders but they still hold your drink so Obviously, Suzuki know what they're doing. Maybe somewhere in the world you've got square cups and they're meeting that very unique market in the world. This particular model, we've got the new automatic gearbox fitted to it. They have added, an, uh, they've changed this from the 2020 model. So it's a bit smoother, um, a bit less jerky, which is good. You can get a five speed manual as well. Now, something I'm really surprised of is the addition of paddle shifters behind the steering wheel to change gear. So if you want to go over to manual and change the gears yourself, you can do so. So you just press a button 
over by the gear stick and then you've got these upper gear on the right and down a gear on the left. I don't think I'll be using that very often but it is useful if you were going downhill and you wanted to use the gears to slow you down as opposed to having to sit on the brake. So something you'd use very very occasionally and probably better than having to look down and do it over here. So that's something that's quite nice. Steering wheel and most of the buttons feel exactly the same as the other Suzuki's I've driven. There's just a few less buttons on here compared to some of the higher models. Just got some modes over on the left here, volume up and down, change the trip computer information with this info button, mute and then ways of picking up the telephone or connecting to Bluetooth over here. Obviously got lights and everything, not even going to bother talking about them. Although now I just have mentioned them so I have talked about them, <laughs> but you know what I mean. In the middle we've got a silver Suzuki badge and this sort of a bit of extra aluminium plasticky thing which breaks up the colour slightly in this V shape. I'm sure there's a proper technical term that Suzuki would be able to tell me what this V shape thing is called. But it does look quite nice. The other thing, the steering wheel is a good size, it's not too big fits in your hand nicely. Some manufacturers at the moment are putting big fat sporty steering wheels that I don't particularly like. So this, this for me is just about the right size. So in terms of seats, these are pretty good for what you'd expect this car to be used. We've got a slight bit of side bolstering here. We can adjust the height, the angle of the back of the seat. The only thing you haven't got is adjustable lumbar. I don't think you need any more than that particularly. It's not the sort of car, you've got to remember where it sits. You're not going to see this thing on a track day. You're probably not going to be throwing it down country roads and complaining that you're getting body roll on it. Not that sort of car at all. Um, if you want that sort of thing, you buy yourself a Swift Sport. I'll put a card up there. Shameless plug for myself. Um, of that review. So seating, I'm very happy as a driver. The biggest change to the interior has to be the removal of this two-tone colours. So this model, as you can see, has got just black plastic. The previous 2020 model had a two-tone colour. So we had black at the top, cream underneath. Now Suzuki have obviously decided for one reason or another, whether it wasn't very popular or whether it's just cheaper to go this way, that they'd remove that. So we've got just plastic, but there are a few touches of aluminium colouring to just break up the colour. So around the infotainment system, around the air vent controls, a few bits of the steering wheel and also the grab handles on the door. So it's not completely black. So I don't mind that at all. I think it actually looks a bit classier to be honest, although I wouldn't be disappointed if I did own the pre-facelift one because it is, it's still quite nice. We've got some carbon fibre effects around the air vents up here, so that's quite a nice little touch. But overall this interior, it looks absolutely fine. We do have some cheaper plastic I think that's a bit unfair. Maybe more robust plastics that are probably going to last forever. Um, Suzuki's are well known for their reliability and durability and just go on forever. So the interior hopefully should last as well. So it's easy to clean. Certainly you get dirt. Well, we all know what it's like when you've got a car after a while. You get mud and dirt. You know, you take your dogs around in it. <laughs> You put your kids in the back, there's crisp packets. So I think this interior is going to last, which is a very, very important thing. So I found somewhere to park up. It's really not very scenic. It's a car park next to a railway station behind a supermarket with some tires littered stylishly around the place. But we'll have a quick look. The main difference with this 2021 model is the grill at the front that has been revised um, but most of the front of this is exactly the same the thing that is great about this size of car the fact it's only got a 1.2 liter engine means the bonnet can be made really small and it does mean when you're driving around town it's a lot more maneuverable and you can judge when 
parking so that's really good the styling of it is a mini SUV obviously so it's quite boxy and there goes a southern train perfect what better place than that um we'll carry on talking just pretend that's not there so it's quite a square boxy front to it but it's not bad looking having a square boxy shape does give you some benefits if we've seen in the back of the car you can certainly see from this angle how small this car is uh, only 3.6 meters you would picture inside to also be very small but it's surprising once we look in the back how much room you get we've got the silver roof bars it's been jacked up obviously to give it the suv feel black alloys and we've got these kick plate i think that's the proper term for it on the side that have been added afterwards just to protect your doors we've got this bit here i was saying about the whiz kid we've got these slashes in the back which is harking back to the 70s that luckily is the only thing from the 70s on this car but overall yeah it's not bad let's get in the back because this is where the biggest surprise has got to be in this car now that's the most exciting thing about getting into the back of the car is how wide the doors are how tall the roof is and how low the floors are that means you can just step in if you've got problem climbing in and out of cars this is really really good news for you the next thing is the amount of legroom i have got i don't know how suzuki have done that some sort of wizardry going on here it's a really small car on the outside but in the back here i'm six foot so i've left the seats exactly where i'd have them if i was driving or sitting in the passenger seat i have a couple of inches between my knees and the back of the seat my feet also because of the slightly raised seats in the front i can fit them all the way underneath so in the back it is very comfortable for the passenger the other thing they've also got now uh, with the SZT and SZ5 so the two uh, the middle and the top of the range one we get two seats in the back and then the base model you get three now you might be thinking hang on hmm why only three in in the base one I, I want three there but to be honest fitting three adults in the back of this car is going to be quite unpleasant it's going to be very tight um so what they've done is given two seats in the back here so two adults very comfortably but it means you can slide the both these seats forwards and backwards and also recline them and that is a really nice feature it's got two benefits one it means your passengers can have even more room and be even more comfortable and if you do need to still have two people you can slide the seat forward and it gives you more room in the boot and that's a great thing now this has got a 50 50 split on the seats if you went for the three uh three seats in the back it would be a 60 40. child friendly we've got isofix um what else we got cup holders uh or bottle holders not really cup they're not cup holders although going on to that that segues me nicely into another cup holder in the back but this isn't a square one this is special this is a massive hexagonal cup holder i've never been so excited by cup holders in cars but we've got one down there which is great so you can put a bottle of drink in there um in the back you've got to do some physical work if you want to wind your windows up we've got manual winders i expect the sz5 comes with electric but it's not too much of a hardship having to wind your windows up and down loads of headroom it's really airy in the back now another nice feature that suzuki have introduced these rear seats i think they're called auditorium seats is they are actually sit slightly higher than the seats in the front and it's supposed to if you've got car thickness it means you can look over and still see the whole of the front window which is great so that's a really nice touch i never knew anything about that until i was speaking with the dealer and it was a new thing they've introduced so there we go guys that's the back of the ignis really like it in here so let's hop in the front of the car and we'll carry on our journey exploring this new 2021 model
the view out the front is really good because you're in this compact SUV you've got a slightly higher a more commanding view of the road we've got thin pillars here so we've got everything is nice and open the only thing at the back we've got quite thick pillars which do block the rear view of the car but Suzuki have got around that by using some really clever technology they're called wing mirrors <laughs> so you can see what's going out outside I'm not being sarcastic about that at all honestly um, but that's fine and this SZT model and also the SZ5 so that's middle of the range and top of the range come with parking cameras so that really does help and the fact it's a small car anyway makes this a nice easy car to actually park up I found the automatic gearbox in this car to be pretty good it's not great but it does everything well I'd say the only thing I do find is when you pull away so like now it holds the gear for a bit too long in first it could do with changing up a bit quicker but that's about it once you're traveling along I haven't really noticed it changing gear or doing anything at all I've just put my foot down and done what I needed to something that is odd in terms of styling other than the square cup holders although they work is over on the passenger side on the dash there's a a strange shelf but it's curved so there's no way you could put anything in there without it falling out as soon as you drove away don't know why they've done that I suppose it does make the dash look a bit more interesting so maybe it's just a, a styling feature if you do work for Suzuki and their design department please put in the comments down below what on earth you'd actually put in there because I don't have a clue I don't mind it um, but you just never use it so what's my final thoughts on this 2021 Suzuki Ignis if you are in the market for a city car this is a really good bet it's a bit like a TARDIS as well we've got loads of room on the inside yet the outside is somehow very very small I've no idea how they've managed to do that there is loads of head and leg room for two adults in the back I've been in compact SUVs that don't have this amount of room so that is fantastic the inside is well put together the materials used are maybe a bit cheaper in terms of feel but they are going to last they feel like they're going to be around forever the actual Suzuki as a brand are really well known for their reliability so it's definitely worthwhile if you're in the market for a small city car definitely give Suzuki in Worthing a ring and say you'd like to come down and test the new Ignis well in fact any car they've got just give them a ring anyway guys I'm going to call this video to a close if you have liked it please give it a thumbs up comments are always welcome and remember to click on the subscribe button thanks for watching